A couple of years ago, I was uh, traveling from Port-au-Prince to Cap Haitian. And I came across a mountain um, in, um, around Lembe um, that I wanted to climb. I, um, I asked the people who lived in the area, how long would it take for me to climb to the top of the mountain? And they told me 30 minutes. I thought that was pretty reasonable. So I asked that they would give me a guide so I can take a peek at the top of the mountain. Well, um, we went for our walk, and uh, we went on a hike, and then we started walking. We walked for 30 minutes, and I realized that I, I, I lifted up my eyes and saw that we were not close. Uh, then we walked another 30 minutes, and still we were not close. And at that time, since I had not exercised for a while, uh, you know, I was out of breath. I was sweating. My uh, legs were hurting. And, um, and of course, since it was a small road that bordered a cliff, um, there was also the fear. What if our, you know, our, you know, our foot slipped? You know, so we had all of that going on. So it was a battle making it to the top of the mountain. They had told me 30 minutes. But that at the end of the day, it took us two hours climbing to get to the top of the mountain. It was a difficult road, but we made it to the top. And when we made it to the top, the view was amazing. It was breathtaking looking at that view up there. But in order for us to enjoy that extraordinary view, we had to pay a price. We had to pay the price of climbing the mountain. We had to pay the price of walking a slippery road. We had to pay the price of ignoring our legs that were hurting and kept on moving. You do not get to any stage of success in life without paying a price. All of us have to pay a price to be at the top to succeed in your profession, to succeed in your marriage, to succeed in your academic life, to succeed in your relationship with other people, you always have to pay a price. And the name of that price is self-control. In order to be successful in any area of life, you need to pay the price of self-control. And we find that concept, that virtue in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, where it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, um, long sufferings, suffering or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness or humility, and self-control. So the Bible talks about self-control. This entire month, we're going to be talking about self-control. One of the most important characteristics that we need to develop as a Christian, self-control. So I'm just going to look at three important points about self-control this morning. Number one, what is self-control? Number two, why we need to have it in every area of our lives. And number three, why is self-control the most difficult thing you can ever have uh, develop in life, but the most important thing you will ever develop. So let's look at the first question. Number one, what is self-control? The word self-control in the New Testament is eg krates in New Testament. Eg krates, it comes from two words, eg, which means, which means inside, and krates, which comes from um, kratos in Greek, which means power. So eg kratos li literally means, or eg krates li literally means power inside. So self-control is the power that you have to control the man inside of you. It's the ability to control your inner man. Again, self-control is the ability to control your inner man. Now, sometimes we call that inner man the soul. Sometimes we call him the ego. Sometimes we call him the self. 
but it's the same thing. That inner man is composed of intellect, emotion, and will. So in other words, when we say self-control is the ability to control the inner, the inner man or the ability to control your soul, it means the ability to control your thoughts, the ability to control your emotions, and the ability to control your decisions. In other words, they don't control you. Your thoughts don't control you. You control them. Your emotions don't control you. You control them. Your desires do not control you. You control them. When you're able to control your thoughts and you're able to control your emotions and you're able to control your desires, it is called self-control. So in other words, self-control is soul management. Self-control is the ability to control your own soul. It's the ability to control your own thoughts, your own desires, and your own emotions. This is why the Bible says in Luke chapter 21 verse 19, in Luke chapter 21 verse 19, Jesus says, by your patience possess your soul. By your patience possess your soul. You have the responsibility to possess your soul. You have the responsibility to control your soul. You have the responsibility to manage your soul. You cannot let your soul possess you. You have to possess your soul. You cannot let your soul control you. You have to control your soul. You cannot let your soul manage you. You have to manage your soul. You have to say, my soul return to my rest because the Lord has been good to you so uh, uh, self-control is fundamentally soul management control your inner man so 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 you know what's right and you lead it in the right direction now that is self-control now the second thing you need to realize is that self-control is necessary in every area of our lives it's not enough to just have self-control in one area we need to have self-control in everything. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, the word says, Everyone who competes in a game exercises self-control in all things. Somebody say all things. Somebody say all things. Everyone who competes in a game exercises self-control in all things. So as believers, you and I, the Bible says, it's not enough for us to just have self-control in this area, in that area, in that area, and, 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 and neglect other areas. But we need to have self-control in everything that we do. Say everything. An athlete that, is, that has self-control in his practice, but does not have self-control in the way that he's, he eats his diet, doesn't have self-control in the way that he sleeps, does not have self-control with what he drinks, does not have self-control with his relationship with other people, ultimately, that is going to affect him. And he will lose, lose his crown, not because he was disorganized in his, um, you know, athletic life, but because he was disorganized in other areas. You could show up in practice every day at 4 o'clock and always be faithful at it. But as an athlete, if you're supposed to eat things that, that, is, that, that are meant to give you energy and you're not eating them and you're eating any kind of food, um, that athlete is supposed to go to bed, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night to have a good 8 hours of sleep because he's got a game the next day. But instead of sleeping that night, he stays out partying with his friends and drinking and he's coming home at 3 o'clock in the morning to wake up at 7 o'clock suddenly the performance of that athlete is going to be affected and the athlete can lose not because he didn't have the skills not because he didn't have self-control in the game but because he didn't have self-control in the other areas somebody say all things and the Bible says, you and I, as Christians, we are also athletes. And the Bible says, we are not running. Or everyone who's running, they are running for a perishable crown. That's what the Bible say. They would run, you know, uh, they would play uh, 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 that NBA championship, and they would play football, and they would play different things, and they would get that gold cup. And guess what? The next season, next year, that gold cup is going to go to somebody else. It's not going to stay in your hand. 
but you and I, we are, we, we are playing for a crown that will last eternally. We are playing for a crown that we will get for eternity. And just like our natural athletes need to exercise self-control in all things, as believers, the Bible says we need to be disciplined, have self-control in all things. Somebody say all things. So as Christians, sometimes we tend to have discipline. And by the way, self-control and discipline are the same thing. When you have self-control, it produces discipline. Self-control, soul control, soul management, soul composure is what produces discipline. So when we are talking about, when we're talking about it as an inner element, we call it self-control. When we are talking about its exterior manifestation, we call it discipline. But self-control and discipline are exactly the same thing. You know, if you have self-control inside, you're going to live a life of discipline. Because what causes us to be undisciplined? What causes us to be disorderly? What causes us to be disorganized in our Christian life, in our academic life, in our spirit? It's because we lose control of the soul. Because we know what's right. We're not confused about what's right. We know what's right and we know what's wrong. We know what we should wear. We know what we should not wear. We know what music we should listen to, what music we should not listen to. We know the friends that we should have, the friends we should not have. We know where to go and we should not go. Why do we, why do we end up doing what we're not supposed to do? Because at some point, the soul says, let's go that way, and we lose the control. And the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is self-control, soul control, soul management, inner power. So I may want to... Give that person that responds. They said something to me. I know what I'm about to say is not right. There is something that's telling me, don't, 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 don't answer. But, but there's another part. Our mind knows what's right. Our spirit knows what's right. But there's another part that wants to answer. And we lose control. And we throw, you know, we get into a fit of anger. You know, we, you know we throw a temper tantrum. And then um, we, we say certain things that we're not supposed to say and we regret our actions and we regret our words. So in reality, self-control is soul control. And we need to have it, the Bible say, in all things. Somebody say all things. So it means as a Christian, it, mean, it means your prayer life needs to be disciplined. But it's not just your prayer life that needs to be disciplined. Your life in the Word needs to be disciplined. Yes, yes, yes. Your worship needs to be disciplined. But it's not only those things. As a Christian also, it means your time needs to be disciplined. It means the Word that comes out of your mouth needs to be disciplined. Is that all right? It means, it means, it means uh, 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 um, if I give the way that I manage my time, I need to e exercise self-control in the way that I watch next Netflix. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh, ah, and Netflix, you know, um, as soon as a movie's done, they don't even put a commercial and the next episode comes in and you start to watch one episode and you're watching six and seven back to back and it's one o'clock, uh, uh, you know, in the morning and you're fr in front of that television. Self-control says, my soul, even though you're enjoying this, we're turning off that TV. And when you are able to say that to yourself, it produces discipline. We need to be disciplined in, in, in uh, the way. We need to be disciplined with our clothes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. When you're walking to a Christian room, your closet should be Christian. Hey, hey. Your closet, if you can't say amen, say I don't know. If you can't say amen, say ouch. I was going to say I'm way. Your closet needs to be disciplined. The Bible says, when Jesus resurrected from the dead, when they came into the room where he died, yeah, I believe in John chapter 20, the Bible says they found his clothes properly folded in their place. Jesus resurrected from the dead. Oh, if it was me, oh my goodness. If it were me, I was... I, I was in, in hell for three days and finally the light comes in and the father says, I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of grace. I wasn't going to take no time to put my clothes back in their place. I would just fly out. Jesus took time after the crucifixion and he spent three days in the belly of hell when the time came for him to get resurrected. Before he came out of the tomb, he took the clothes 
and folded it and put it in the right in the right place because he had self-control and he had self-discipline somebody say self-control mm -hmm. so your closet say a lot about your soul mm, oh hallelujah your room says a lot about your soul your kitchen says a lot about your soul where you put your shoes say a lot about your soul so I may come from the service and I'm still tired, but my shoes supposed to go somewhere and my soul is saying, listen, we're too tired, we're going to bed, but you need to tell my soul, listen, it's going to take us 30 seconds. We're not going to die, but we're going to put our shoes in the right place and we're going to put our ties in the right place and we're going to put the shirt in the right place. It's a spiritual thing. Somebody say self-control. When the Holy Spirit comes in your life, it starts to give you power to control your soul. You start saying to the soul, we're so, we, yes, we can do this. Because that same soul that you cannot command, it, 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 it's time to put your, 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 your clothes in your closet. And you can't have authority over your soul to say, this is what we're going to do, even though we don't feel like it. it that, same, this, that, same, that same lack of control that you lose, it's also going to manifest in front of the computer. When you're not supposed to watch something and you know it's not good, but the soul is telling you, let's do it. The same way you lose control with your own, you lose control with your soul. You lose control in front of that computer screen. And you lose control with the conversation with the boss because you have not trained your soul to listen to you. Did you guys hear me? You, 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 you begin developing self-control in the small things. It begins in the small things. It begins with doing your bed when you wake up in the morning. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm talking about this morning. I mean, amen, Pastor Greg. Hallelujah. I mean, it begins with doing your bed. It begins with putting your clothes in the right place. Because if you, can, if, you, if you can have authority over your soul for those small things, then one day you're going to find yourself in a room with somebody and that person is going is gonna, to is gonna say, let's have a great time. And you're going to want to sleep with that person. You're going to know it's wrong. But because you have trained your soul in little things like doing your bed and putting things in their place, you have trained yourself. Now when the big temptation comes, you will say, my soul, listen to me. And it will listen. I don't know if you've ever seen parents who raise up children that were never disciplined as babies. They raise up children. A child, if you want that child to listen to you later on in life, you start disciplining that child as a baby. And you start saying, son, no, we're not doing this. No, you're not going to answer like this. You're going to say, please, you're going to say thank you. Later on, when that child gets to 16 and 17 years old, because you had trained that child to be obedient, that child will listen to you. But if you didn't discipline that child as a, a, you know, as a baby, you know, you were too sensitive and, 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 and you were too soft. To, you know, that child is going to grow up to be a rebellious child. Some of us have grown our souls to become a rebellious soul. Because we never train our soul in the little things. When the big things come, the soul takes over and becomes rebellious because he had never been trained is self-control. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Say all things. But lastly, I'm going to mention this and we're going to close. What we're going to talk about this month, it's going to be a difficult subject, but the most important subject in your life. Because... Self-control is the most important thing that you can ever develop. I'm going to go even, listen, I'm going to even tell you. I'm going to even tell, going to tell you. Without self-control, you can't even serve God. You can't even love God. Oh yeah. Some people just say, I just love Jesus. I just love Jesus. They have no discipline in their prayer life. They have no discipline to do devotion. They have no discipline to show up in a small group. They have no discipline to show up in rehearsal. They have no discipline to make correction when somebody in authority tells them you need to. They have no discipline. I, you know, I love Jesus. But the problem is, the problem is, love manifests through self-control. Love is not the emotions. Love is the actions. 
And in order to do the right action, it takes self-control. You guys remember when Jesus was talking to that church, um, I think it's uh, Laodicea, uh, where it says, you have, you have left your first love. You guys remember that? He says, you have le left your first love. What did he tell them to do? You have left your first love. And then he said, he said do the former works. You have left your first love, and he's the remedy. I'm not going to put love in your heart, and I'm not going to make you feel good. Jesus said, just go back and do the things that you used to do. You used to discipline yourself to pray. You used to discipline yourself to fast. You used to discipline to seek my presence, and now you don't feel the love anymore. Just go back, discipline yourself, stop doing the things you used to do, and then the love is going to come out. You can't love God without self-control. It takes discipline to love God. It takes self-control to love God. It takes managing your own soul to say yes is yes, no is no. It takes that to love God. But if you're able to do that, you are more than a hero. I'm going to close with that verse. Look at what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. In Proverbs of chapter 16, um, verse 32. Let me see if I, if I have it here. Um, Proverbs 16, the Bible says, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than who takes a city. The Bible says, the person who can rule his spirit, the person who can rule his inner man is more powerful than a person who can take over a city. You, if you can control your own soul, you are more powerful than a general who's got helicopters and tanks and fighter jets and armies. If you can control your own soul, you're more powerful than the general at the Pentagon. Because it's easier to lead the army of the United States of America than to lead your own soul. <laughs> It's easier to lead the army of the United States of America than to lead your own soul. That's how difficult it is. And that's why you need the intervention of the Holy Spirit. That's why it is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But if you can control your own soul, if you can lead yourself, there is nobody else that you cannot lead. You heard what I said. If you can lead yourself, there is nobody that you can't lead. In fact, when you, if you are able to lead yourself, you don't even ask anybody to follow you. The moment you are able to lead yourself, you'll become an automatic leader. I'm going to say it again. The person who is able to lead himself, don't worry about leading people and campaigning and trying to find two, three, four people, 10, 20 to follow you. You don't need all of that. Just lead yourself. The moment you start leading yourself right, automatically, people... Will start following you. You won't, you don't you don't need to invite them. They will spot you. They will find you out, and they will follow you. Why? Because the moment you lead yourself, you're gonna become a positive model. And the problem in is in this world, there aren't a lot of positive models. So if you can lead yourself, it can, if you can show up when you're supposed to show up and do what you're supposed to do and uh, 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 correct what you're supposed to correct and hand in your homework when you're supposed to do it and show up at rehearsal when you're supposed to do it and learn your song when you're supposed to do it and do what you're supposed to do, immediately you're going to shine because not everybody's doing that. And people will, become, will automatically follow you. You'll become an automatic leader. Whoever can lead his own soul can lead everybody else. I declare you're going to develop self-control. I declare you will have self-control in everything that you do. Starting in your room. Starting in your room right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to have self-control in what you eat. Hallelujah. You're going to have self-control in what you eat. Some of us eat trash. We know it's not good for us, but we can't control. Once the desire comes, we can't control. Some of us drink while not, we're not supposed to drink. Some of us sleep at the wrong time. We, we, go, we, we have the wrong friends. We know it's not the right friend. It's not the right conversation. But we can't break free from that toxic relationship because we don't have self-control. But I declare this month in the name of Jesus.
Jesus Christ. That the fruit of the Holy Spirit, self-control will manifest. Death discipline will manifest. Temperance will manifest. Every area that is disorderly in your life, we declare order. We declare order. We declare order. Every area that is disorderly. Your emotions are disorderly. And your words are disorderly. And your clothes are disorderly. And the way you eat, disorderly. And your diet is disorderly. And the way you are, uh, manage your time is disorderly. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the God that we serve is not the God of disorder, but the God of order. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Every area that is under disorder, every area that is under chaos, uh, in the Bible, when God walked into the chaos, uh, the Bible says in the beginning, uh, God created the heaven and earth, uh, and the heaven and earth uh, was formless and void. There was a chaos, uh, and God stepped into the chaos, uh, and he spoke light, uh, and he moved the water. He says, you go over here. That's not your place. Uh, you go over here. Go back to your place. Uh, God starts to put order in that chaos, uh, and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, during this month, uh, God is going to step into the chaos uh, in your life, uh, and he's going to put order, order in your words, uh, order in your thoughts, uh, order in your desires, order in your diet, uh, order in, in your time, order in your school life, uh, order in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, hallelujah. Come on now. Come and glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Order. Transform us. I refuse to live a life of chaos. I refuse to live a life of disorder. I refuse to live a life of undiscipline. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let order. I say let order. Let order come to my thoughts. Let order come to my mind. Let order come to my words. Let order come into my closet. Let order come into my computer desktop. Let order come into my relationships. Let order come in the way that I eat. Let order come in the way that I drink. Let order come in the relationships that I have. In the name of Jesus Christ. So Father, I pray for order. Everywhere that they are listening to us. Let order manifest itself in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 He who can rule his spirit, he who can rule his spirit, he who can rule his inner man, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, I am going to rule, I am going to rule, the kingdom begins in your soul, the kingdom begins in your soul, you begin to rule in your soul, you begin to rule in your mind, you begin to rule in your emotions, you begin to rule in your inner man, and then you go out and you conquer the city. But don't think about conquering the city until you begin to rule in here. But I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, during this month, it's a month of rulership. I declare it's the month of government. The government of God steps into your soul. The government of God is going to reign in your emotion. The government of God is going to reign in your diet. The government of God is going to reign over the words that come out of your mouth. The government of God is going to reign in your relationship. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's the end of chaos. It's the end of disorder. I declare, let order reign. Let order reign. Let self-control reign. Let self-discipline reign. Let the right things reign in my soul. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey. In you alone, I make my bow. You reign alone as Lord of all. I come before my Lord and King. 
the one who gave is a life for me I raised the banner of his name unto the nation unto the nation of all men the champion the champion of the host of a captain of my destiny oh yes there is order in my life there is a captain in my life there is a champion in my life in you I make my bones you reign alone you reign my life cannot be chaotic the champion the champion. There is a leader. My soul. My soul. I want you to hear this. There is a leader in this house. There is a captain in this house. There is a king in this house. There is a governor in this house. You will not do what you want. You will not do what you want. You will not eat what you want. You will not go where you want. You're going to listen to the voice of the champion, the captain, the lord, the champion of the whole. Captain of my destiny, my destiny. Oh, in you alone, in you alone, I make my vow. You reign alone over the Lord. Say the captain, the champion. Yes, my second. My goodness, my goodness, there is something mighty. You reign alone as Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the champion of the host above. And you know the good thing is, when you hang out with champions, you become a champion. If you let the champion reign in you, the champion, if you walk with Jesus as the champion, the champion that is inside of you is going to show up. I say it's going to show up. If you can submit to his leadership, if you can submit to the leadership of the captain, if you can submit to the leadership of the king, suddenly you will be a champion. A champion in your family, a champion in your school, a champion in your business, a champion in your professional life. Oh my goodness, my goodness. You can't have a champion without a coach. You can't have a champion without a coach. No matter how talented you may be, your talent alone will not take you there. You need a champion. You need a captain. You need a leader. You need somebody to tell you, stand here and avoid that trash. You need somebody to tell you, wake up at 5 o'clock and train for 5 hours and shoot this way and avoid doing it that way. Eat this and only that. But if you can submit, the champion, the champion. Hey, hey. champion I declare your champion you are a champion you are not a loser you are not a loser you are not a loser you are a champion you are a champion you are a champion do not be discouraged don't say I can't do it don't say I can't make it don't say I'm too weak don't say I don't have it you are a champion you are a champion if you follow the rules of the champion the principle of the champion, the advice of the champion, you will. In you alone, in you alone, you reign alone. Listen.
listen I don't have a lot of time I simply have five minutes to close with you I'm gonna take five minutes from the next service to close with you but I just told you it's easier to lead a city the Bible says in Proverbs 16 32 that it's easier to conquer a city than to conquer your own soul but there is good news the Bible says what is impossible to man is possible to God by yourself you cannot conquer that late, lateness problem by yourself you cannot conquer that sugar addiction by yourself you cannot conquer that smoking addiction by yourself you cannot conquer going to the clubs by yourself you cannot conquer those homosexual thoughts your soul seems to be out of order but the God that you serve he can step into a chaos and bring order out of this order so what you need to do is to give him your life if you've never given your life to Jesus do that right now click the first link at the bottom of the page the champion is here the captain is here the king is here he wants to live your life but you have to give it to him click the first link Kunya. click the first link right now click the first link under the page and give your life to Jesus click on the first link if you left God Click the first link. Come on, the champion. The champion. Click on the first link right now. And give your life to Jesus. If you walked away from him, click on the first link and come back right now. If you are alone, I make my voice. You reign alone as Lord. Champion of the host. If you want to be baptized, if you want to be planted in this church, in this ministry, click on the first link right now and make your decision. If you are in one of our campuses, lift up your hands. If you are in one of our campuses, just lift up your hand. If you are in Boston, you are in New York, you are in Guadalajara, lift up your hand. Say, I want to give my life to Jesus. Lift up your hands. Say, I want to come back the champion. And captain of my destiny. My destiny. In you alone. In you alone. I may. If you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time or you maybe you were walking with Jesus and walked away from him and you want to come back home if you want to be baptized it's part of being orderly in your Christian life uh, if Jesus said it you need to do it it's part of self-control and self-discipline uh, click the first link as well if you want to be planted being part of a church being planted in a church is self-discipline it's easy to be out, out there with no pastor no community nobody that you're connected with but church is not my idea or your idea Jesus said I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it it takes discipline to be part of a church because you have to be under a uh, you have to be under a leader and probably you'll have different leaders over you you're gonna have brothers and sisters if you're dressed the right way or say the wrong thing that's gonna tell you it's not the right thing it's, it's it's not easy undisciplined people cannot be part of a church it's hard for them to be part of a church they would rather be out there be on YouTube doing their own things with no leader no brother no sister nobody can tell them that's right or that's wrong why because they've never taken and over control of their soul they follow their desire it takes self-discipline to be planted in a church to be planted in a ministry it's not good enough to be just be watching over the internet you gotta ask Lord where do you want me to plant under which leader you want me to submit which community is going to be my community and if you feel tabernacle of glory is that church that you want to be part of click on the first link right now and then fill out that form and simply write uh, 
planted. You want to give your life to Jesus, click the first link. You want to come back home, click the first link. You want to be baptized, click the first link. You want to be planted at TG, click the first link. Uh, on the first link right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So do that right now. We're going to sing that song one more time. And then we're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, hallelujah. While we are singing that song and people are making that decision, those of you who are preparing your offering, you're going to prepare your offering and give your offering. When I'm done praying for those who have made a decision, I'm going to pray for those who are presenting their offering. It takes self-discipline to tithe. Oh my goodness. It takes self-discipline to tithe. Without self-control, you will not tithe. You will always find something else that you can do with that money. You will always find that it's too difficult. Without self-discipline, you can't give an offering because you will rebel against what the Lord is telling you in your soul. All of that is part of discipline. We're going to sing that one more time while we are singing that song. Those of you who are making a decision, make a decision. Those of you who are giving your offering, click on the second leg. Those of you are giving offering. Those who are making a decision, click the first leg. Those who are giving your offering, click the second leg. And while we sing that song, do that right now. I'm going to pray for all of you. Our destiny. In you You reign alone as Lord. In you alone, in you alone, I make my bones. You reign alone as Lord of all. Repeat those words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for speaking to my heart today about self-discipline about soul management father i need you i need you i need you enter my life expand your reign in my life and give me power to manage my desires my thoughts my emotions for the glory of your name now lord jesus Thank you for speaking to me. I realize I am a sinner. I have done things that are not right in your sight. But your word says you sent your son, Jesus, to die for me. Jesus, I give you my life right now. Take it and use it for your glory. I want to be planted. I want to be baptized. And I want to grow in your house. In Jesus' name, somebody say.